And what's up everybody and welcome to my LG Optimus G Pro review and this is LG's first step into the fabric game so thanks to AT&T for sending out this review unit. My name is Danny and let's take a look at the LG Optimus G Pro. So LG wanted to make a huge splash with this screen and they did. This is a 5.5 inch 1080p display, the largest 1080p display as of the making of this video. But it's not that hard to hold this phone. I mean, look at it, it feels good in the hand and this is largely due to the shrunken bezels on the side. Even though that this is a tall device, it's very, very easy to handle. And I found that it felt really comfortable in the hand. I've used this device for about two weeks as my daily driver and I found it to be a pleasure whether I was browsing the internet, playing games or on Twitter, it was really nice. I didn't find this phone to be intimidating and look at it right against the Samsung Galaxy S4 which is a 5 inch 1080p display and it's just as thin so it's just a taller device but it did not feel bad and when I put this thing to my face I didn't feel embarrassed or feel ridiculous for putting it onto the side of my face. It was very comfortable even when making phone calls and it passes the pocket test which is the most important thing. The Optimus G Pro is entirely plastic and it's glossy too. So if you don't like the glossy back or if you like metal or if you like the soft polycarbonate plastic, then you're not gonna like this phone. But it carries over that pattern design seen in the other Optimus lines. The advantage of that plastic though is a removable back and you will find a large 3140 milliamp battery and you also find 32 gigs of internal storage and a micro SD card slot so that is very good on internal specs. And on the back of this thing you will find NFC but you will also find a coil here and that is because it has QI or Qi wireless standard built into the back of the phone. So if you have a Qi wireless charger laying around, then it will support wireless charging, which I found to be awesome that they included this and it makes charging very easy on the Optimus G Pro. Let's talk about the hardware real quick. And this thing features a 5.5 inch 1080p display with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 quad core processor. On the bottom, you'll find the physical home button. Up top, you'll find the LG logo, the earpiece, and the HD front facing camera. And on the right side, you will find the power on and off switch. On the opposite side, you will see that Q button which you can map it to any app open that you want and the volume rocker switch. And on the top, you'll find the IR blaster and the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And on the bottom, you'll find the micro USB and the primary microphone. And up top, you'll find a 13 megapixel camera with LED flash and that little speaker, which is terrible by the way, one of the downsides of the Optimus G Pro. So let's jump right into the call quality for if it can't make good phone calls, then it's not worth anything. And the Optimus G Pro, you should not worry because it's one of the best phones that I've used. It's got one of the best modems that I've seen in a phone this year so far. The voice is crisp, it's clear, it's even got tones to it, it's loud. I found it to be a pleasure with voice calls and the LT connectivity on this is very fast. I have good AT&T coverage in my area, never dropped a phone call and that's becoming very common with most calls these days. But this is one of the best phones I've ever used so do not worry about call quality. So it's very natural that this phone is going to be compared with the Galaxy Note 2 since Samsung is the innovator in this space of larger screens. And this is basically a Galaxy Note 2. They took the Galaxy Note 2 and everything people loved about it and just put it right into the future. And I'll explain this later on. It's basically like a spec punch to the Galaxy Note 2. But they did some different things in software. So let's take a look at the software on the LG Optimus G Pro. The first thing you're going to notice is that there's no pen stylus. So if you want a pen, you definitely need to go with the Galaxy Note 2. But this updated Snapdragon 600 quad-core processor is blazingly fast. And this is a 1080p screen instead of a 720p screen, which you'll find in the Galaxy Note 2. And I found this to be superior. And unlike AMOLED screens, this thing is really good out in sunlight. So I was able to use this in direct sunlight and I was able to see the screen without a hitch. Similar to Samsung, they definitely skinned Android and it's very heavy. 
but I found that the LG customizations were actually pretty helpful, especially when finding apps to put on the home screen. It's all organized right there, and changing wallpapers and things like that were very easy to do, and I found it very intuitive. And I really love this lock screen as well. Really good effect. Now there are a lot of animations in the UI, but I find it that it doesn't really bog the system down, but it does hog a lot of RAM but you can clear that pretty easily. I do like these little toggle switches here, which is a neat effect. And here in the menu, you'll find something for the home button LED, which is amazing. I thought this was awesome that they built it right into the home button. So, and it's multicolored too, and I really enjoyed it. So in the settings, you will also see the quick button shortcut, which I have it to open the camera app on that Q button, and you can set it to do anything. And there's a lot of customization here, trust me. And this thing is running Android 4.1.2. That's a bummer that's not running 4.2.2. And let's see if it gets an update, but you still get Project Butter and Google Now, and it runs pretty good. So let's see what LG does on the software update front. But the G Pro does some cool things on the software side, like you're able to zoom in while you're watching video. Introduce with the Optimus G before, and you can hit this little button here, and it gives you the Q slide guide where you can put this video on the background so you can multitask, but it's able to be resized. Very cool, and this little bar gives you a transparency. So pretty cool things on the software side here on the G Pro that you don't see on the other leading phones out there. But this screen is amazing. This 5.5 inch screen is very nice. It's a little bit on the cool side, so you're gonna get some blue tones here, but it is really sharp, really crisp, and watching videos and consuming media on here, it is fantastic. So how does it perform on synthetic benchmarks? I was getting a lot of errors, especially on Quadrant. So I ran Antutu on here, and even the results of the Antutu benchmark, it was kind of disappointing here. It was less than 20,000, and I did this multiple times. But trust me, the synthetic benchmarks don't do anything for this phone, for it's very fast. On casual gaming, like Candy Crush here, man, I'm addicted to this game, by the way. This thing has taken away a lot of hours of my life. And if you're playing this game, then put that comment in the comment section below and give me a thumbs up because I know you're probably playing this game. But even Riptide 2, a brand new game, is running flawless here on the 320 Adreno GPU. And you will have no problems playing any game on this Optimus G Pro. I think you'll love gaming on this device. So everything else is okay, but what about the battery life? on the Optimus G Pro. And this thing has a huge battery on the back, so how does it perform? I've gotten about 10 hours battery life out of this thing. And if you're using it on moderate use, you can definitely get through an entire day with the Optimus G Pro without an issue. I'm a pretty heavy user and it got me through the entire day. And this is a pretty good example of my battery life right now. It's about six o'clock and I woke up around around 8 a.m. and I've been using this phone on and off, playing some games, watching YouTube and things like that. And I got about 40% battery left. So I'm probably gonna get about 10 hours battery life, which pushes this thing into above average on battery. So I think you won't be disappointed. So to sum it up, what do I think about the G Pro? I think that the G Pro is a note 2 plus. That's what I think it is. It's like maybe a Galaxy Note 1.5. This is exactly what the Galaxy Note series is heading and the balls in Samsung's court right now. And it's right around the corner. The Galaxy Note 3 is coming right around the corner. But this thing has a lot of advantages over the Note 2. It's got a 1080p display. It's got a new updated Snapdragon 600 quad-core processor. And it's got some of LG's flavors on there, like this Q slide apps here. This was introduced pretty much with the Galaxy Note series, but here you're able to run multiple ones. And LG just put their different flavor on it. It's the little things like being able to run this UI in a landscape mode. That kind of sets it apart, but it does not have a pen stylus. What it does have is a great 13 megapixel camera that takes really good shots and also takes good video. And you can watch my separate video of that and I'll leave the link below. So in summary, if you're not a fan of TouchWiz or Samsung, then this is a great alternative if you want a larger screen. But the Galaxy Note 3 is right around the corner. So LG stepped their game up. So let's see what Samsung does. And I bet that they'll rise above. 
So please give me a thumbs up if you like this video and follow me on Twitter at Super Scientific. Subscribe to my channel today for there's tons of videos for you to watch and I will see you in the next video. Thanks guys.